Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. We've got a couple special guests. Lourdes, you want to introduce yourself to uh, our friends out there watching or listening? Yes, my name is Lourdes Maestres. I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Not Miami. Not Miami. <laughs> uh, I have a team of 13 agents, uh, seven employees, and I am back in production as of last year. Congratulations. And, and what else? Um, what else would you like to know? What else do you do? <laughs> oh, I'm also a coach. Thank you very, <laughs> very much. Very important thing. Thank yes, you very of course. Much. I've been a coach for Tom Ferry for the past year. She's like, but my schedule's full. So no, do <laughs> not call, do Actually, not write. It is full. I know. And we know why. And that's what we want to talk about today. Ideas. Uh, you guys all know Jason Pantana. You all know Jimmy Mackin. So we want to talk about a couple of different things today. And we want to get a bunch of different perspectives. So I know the person listening right now. They understand that we've got all these converging forces. There's an election cycle coming up. There is massive pent up demand. Rates are going to continue to lower, even though it's been wonky in the U.S. and Canada. And most importantly, if the person listening, you right now, you don't solve the inventory crisis, you're going to miss the mark. So, so I want to talk about what are all the things an agent should do? Because what I'm telling everybody, and I know you are as a coach and you are as a coach and you are helping everybody with marketing is... How do we get ahead of the curve? How do we make sure that our listing leads, our pipeline is so robust that when the sort of convergence of the interest rates hit, whether that is in July or in December, it doesn't make a difference, they're gonna come down. When it does, you're sitting on such a robust pipeline of opportunity that you're gonna be the opposite of the people that didn't take action because they're gonna be behind the eight ball. So, so you can go from your perspective or your client's perspective, but. I'm going to start with you, ladies, first. Okay. Tell us, tell us something that a client has done that you are impressed by that every person listening can do the same and get a similar result. So I have a coaching client. Yes. Right? So I have this client in Houston. Can I say her name? Of course. Okay. Her name is Aida Villalobos. She did a video uh, basically with yes. her cell phone yep. and where she's sharing how you can cash out on the equity of your home to keep buying your next property, whether it's an investment or upgrade in your home yes. without having to sell it or just refinance it. Yes. And that video went viral. She booked 30 appointments from that yes. video. And now she's booked all the way to April. She was telling me, I saw her, we saw her. she was at the uh, Houston Roadmap. What, what was it on the video that made it so special? The video, the message, you know, cash out on your equity of your home so you can buy the next home and yes. then you sell after the fact or yeah. maybe you leave it as an investment property. So right. it was very attractive to the consumer. It's in Spanish. It's yes. for the Hispanic community. That was the key, yeah. too, because we talked about I'm like anytime you can do two languages, if you if you if native is Spanish, do Spanish. If it's Portuguese, do Portuguese. If it's German, do German. Did she also do it in English? No. Because I challenged her. On yes. That. No, that's one of her goals. Yeah. yeah. Yes. OK. It's, so, one of the, it's one of the things that Mr. Beast did with yes, his videos. Mr. Yes. Beast obviously is uh, English speaking and he converted, yep. I know, all of his videos into yes. every other language to help yep. grow his audience, you know, tenfold. What's interesting about what you just said, which jumps out to me, is I think in real estate we have this curse of knowledge, which is we understand these things because we live them and breathe them every single day, such as being able to take equity in my property and buy a new home, right. be, like understanding what an assumable mortgage is. Like mm -hmm. Most people don't know what the, that is. I think what jumps out to me is that there's all these things that you're explaining to consumers that we hear every day. We assume everybody else already knows that. So we don't share it. We don't yes. promote it. We don't create, create videos around it. And I think that's why a campaign like that was so successful. I would double down on that and say, I think a lot of times we think, I don't want to post a video like this because maybe I'll seem salesy to my followers or mm -hmm. who are likely sphere of influence contacts and so forth. I think A, you're taking for granted that they know what it is. But B, the other factor you're overlooking is the fact that algorithms today on platforms like TikTok and Instagram yeah. and Facebook are interest-based. Mm -hmm. And so if you can identify a topic, you said it was the message that worked. Mm -hmm. And I agree, video is just an amplifier of your message. Yeah. And if you can identify a message that's going to resonate with a specific subset of the marketplace, the algorithm's job is to effectively find those people and go on a scavenger hunt for you, looking for mm -hmm. the people who want to take your offer if you'll just supply the demand. Yeah. So, Lourdes, what about you and your own business? You know, today we were talking about um, how do we front load the marketing? And I'll, I'll give context and I want your insight. What I'm, what I'm telling you, like my best clients, like the people that I've worked with like for 25 years, how many open houses are you gonna do this year? Well, I, I kind of do two a month and I'm like, awesome. So if you know the rates are gonna drop, if you know buyer demand is strong, if you know there's a lack of inventory, why don't we just do the same 24 open houses but do it literally like from March to July 1st? And she was like, 
oh, that's what you mean by front load. I go, let me take it one step further. I said to you, how many client events do you do? And she's so social. Maxine Gellens, Marty Gellens, shout out to two of the most extraordinary people on the planet. The Garrisons had the same exact conversation. They're so social that Lord, every time they get in front of people, like referrals come in. It's like you shake the tree and apples just seem to fall everywhere, right? So I'm like, so when are your events? They're like, uh, July, October, and December. I'm like, nothing about that says front loading. Nothing about that says get ahead of the noise of what's gonna happen with politics you know, in the news every day, we got to get, you know, we got to get the voice out there. So they're like, oh, so we should do a February event. We should do an April event. What, what do you think my answer was? Yes. Marketing is ever evolving. And with the emergence of AI, the rate of change is faster than ever. Adapt quickly to AI driven marketing strategies or risk falling behind. This is precisely why we've created the AI Marketing Academy, a four week virtual intensive tailored to integrate AI seamlessly into your marketing strategy. You'll start with unraveling the basics of AI, then you'll get to grips with essential AI tools. And finally, you'll learn how to incorporate these tools into effective real-world marketing tactics. Space is limited. Don't miss your chance to be a part of the future. We call every client twice a year. I'm like, that's awesome. Call everybody twice between March and July 1st, and let's figure out who's thinking about it. Let's send the, Z the ZMA or something. So. You're a coach, but you also run this m remarkable team. What are you thinking about? So last year, for example, we actually didn't do any open houses. This year, we're doing two to five per weekend. Now, my biggest challenge is I don't have enough people. Everyone's so busy with the buyers out on yes, the streets. Yes. So now I'm having to pull out from other teams, brand new agents, like, hey, does anybody want to do an open house? Right. I'll take a 25% referral fee from whatever you convert. Right. Right. Now, you're talking about uh, events. I actually have a client in Texas, El Paso, Texas. He's doing an event every two weeks. And then I said to him, how are you going to track your success? He's like, oh, I don't know, a list, a piece of paper. I'm like, no, no, no. You're going to be <laughs> Mr. QR code. I want a QR yes. code yes. on the table, on yes. your T-shirt, on yes. your business card, yeah. on your banner. Yeah. I want a QR code <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I was like, that's good. Yeah. I appreciate that. So he came back in the next coaching call. And I'm like, okay, how many people did you sign up? 158 people. Okay. How many of these were, you know, potential? buyer he set up two appointments from those 158 that's great. just for the first event he's doing one every two weeks so so what like what like give us an like what's the event uh, this one's a home expo and i mm. and then oh, oh, home yeah. expo. somebody's got to talk about weddings right the wedding expo sorry keep going but he's doing home expo he's doing car shows he's going yeah. into nursing homes and literally giving out uh food and information to people family members that come and visit yeah. the, their family members there he's uh, in the beginning he was like funding this i'm like you're funding this like no 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 this is not how this works. Like yeah. you need to go out there and find somebody who's going to sponsor. So now he has developers sponsoring Smart. for the new construction. Smart. So he's paying maybe 30% instead of 100%. Right. And you know what's cool about that? Like that's another good example of front load. Um, but it's also know your strengths, right? Like my little sister, Michelle, who a couple of you guys have met, um, she is, she is an attraction based marketer. Like she'll talk to, she'll talk to anybody. But like, I'm not gonna tell my little sister to go cold call. Like, I, she, she's not gonna circle now, right? But if I say, go do an event, yeah. right? She will just cremate it, right? She took four listings already this month, That's right? Shout out to Michelle. So Jason, when you hear that, what are you telling your clients? Like, what does front load mean from a social standpoint, from a marketing standpoint? Help us understand. Yeah, so front loading, I mean, I think your examples of the events are a really, really key example. I think if you say to me, for instance, hey, I'm gonna be publishing a video every week on YouTube or I'm gonna run a quarterly campaign, it's simply, okay, how do we crank the dial on that? So it's, it's more content. I think a lot of people need to look at their systems for creating more video content. And I think the, the client you referenced a moment ago, it wasn't complicated. She just took her, her, her phone and she realized, I have an important message to say. And so it's not about the high level of production, it's about the high level of consistency and doing it over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, we could go through between all four of us, example after example after example of how video is what's really turning the dial in terms of being one of the most powerful marketing channels there is. So what I'm talking about with my clients is, you need to do more video content, obviously, but it isn't just that. It's having a broad mix. I mean, it's kind of like what you've said forever. It's the core four. It's, it's having diversified lead sources and being consistent about them, um, being planned about them. And we're also doing a lot of paid media this year. So we're putting money on YouTube, we're putting money back in Meta, uh, we're putting money on TikTok in some cases, we're, we're reinvesting in physical marketing. It's about <clears throat> something interesting that's happened with one of my coaching clients is he was always a, a mega marketer. He would do billboards and a lot of really mainstream marketing. And he was, it's Matt, yeah, really, really good at it. And when he started working with me in particular, he'd already established himself as the main, like number one agent in the state of Alabama. Absolutely crushes yeah. it. And 
I pushed him to do more video, more video, more video. And I said, watch what happens. Eventually, all these videos are gonna be at-bats and repetition where you're gonna determine what you wanna say in all your other channels. And so I think you gotta realize video is not necessarily something that happens on its own. It starts to feed everything else you do because it's your mouthpiece to be connected to the consumer, to their questions, in the DMs, so that it informs everything else you do and it works together. Um, at the end of the day, it's about being a knowledge broker. And what I loved about your story with your client in Houston was he was willing to go to people and talk about the process of home ownership and the steps involved. I think a lot of people, a lot of agents in our profession are just trying to be as close to the house as they can be. I want to be at the right house at the right time. When somebody finds it, I can kind of, you know, attach myself to that transaction in a way. And I'm not trying to be mean about it, but I think the idea of going in and saying, Hey, did you know offering information and being an informant? I think it's a really powerful perspective to take. Hey, if you need more marketing support, emails, texts, direct mail samples, check out listingleads.com. That's listingleads.com for all the marketing you need, plus fresh drops every single month to give you more stuff to go generate more listings. See you soon. Yeah, there's a, a thought that comes to my mind, Jason, as you share that. You know, the hard part of this industry is not getting busy, it's staying busy. And what people don't talk about right now is... You know, we talk about inventory, inflation, interest rates, but there, there's a fundamental problem with our industry that unless we address that problem, which I think aligns with the front loading of your marketing, that like nothing that we, we share or coach is going to actually help anyone get anywhere. And that is the vicious cycle. In our industry, it's if you're not busy, what do you do all day long? You market, you sell, you wear t-shirts with QR codes, you shoot videos, yeah. and guess what happens? You get, it, busy. You get busy. You get busy. And then what happens next? You go, it takes some chill time. I'm busy. You work with my clients work and with I your stop client. doing the marketing and prospecting. You open up a couple of escrows. Yeah. You start imagining how you're going to spend the money, right? And then you close the deals and you go on vacation and it's a vicious cycle and you go rich, poor, rich, poor, right. happy new year. And yeah. the agents who have been successful, you know, perennial all-stars yes. have figured out a way to market while they're busy. They, like I call, I call it the always on strategy. Yeah. They're always There's marketing, always. always selling, and always servicing, regardless of how busy they are. Yes. That's the truth. Top producers do not slow down or ebb and flow when the market adjusts. The yeah. market's the market is the market, yeah. to quote Tom yeah. Ferry. Yes. Um, and that, I, I think that that's so smart. true. Yeah, he is, he is genius. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Brilliant. Did I just say that fart? I mean, I just, <laughs> That's yes. okay. You've been talking no, a lot today. No, no, no. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I want to go back to, to Jason's Lord got an AI tool yes. that will help with yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be an AI solution for that. Yeah, because um, you can work against this otherwise. So, so, so we deem this show the idea show. So I made a statement uh, multiple times in the last 45 days, and, and I don't know if this is going to be right for you, and I'm sure at least one person is going to say, oh, that's like one of the best ways that I generate business. But I... After 33 years of being in this business, I think Just Listed and Just Sold are the stupidest marketing pieces on the planet. And if there was something that the four of us could single-handedly eliminate from everybody's repertoire of, well, I took a listing, bang, Just Listed, I took a list, bang, Just Sold, and we can get them to reimagine that in a more interesting way, a more consumer-centric way, a way that, that actually unlocks the imagination, right? I, I, you've heard me say this before. I'm like, you send, you send somebody a just sold card and the consumer already is thinking, real estate agents make too much money. Real estate agents like drink, uh, you know, Chardonnay or, you know, vodka and sleep with everybody in their office and play pickleball. And then they see your just sold card that says listed and sold in three days with five offers and, and got them $120,000 more than asking. And they think to themselves, as anybody should, what the hell did that person actually do? And yet what, what we all know is you met that person eight months ago. You have been nurturing the relationship. You were over at their house. You had a glass of wine with them. You told them what not to do, what you should do. You imagined if you removed this wall or you did this or we redid the backyard that way, then you brought your team over. You made introductions. You had been working on that for eight months, nine months, some people seven years. And then you unveil the property. And because you're so extraordinary at marketing and the market is on our side, you had multiple lobbies, you look like a star, but the consumer never sees that. Yeah. So, so you, you all know the one that I want to talk about. Lourdes, the game is more listings from my listings and the end of just listed and just solds. What say you? 
So I never had just listed, just sold. I, ne- I hated that. I never sent emails like, hey, I just listed this. I just sold this. I, what I do now is I do market reports. I, once a month, I have a market report in some neighborhoods that I farm, and it provides just basically all the data of the market. And that really, people really like it. It's like a nerd yes. report. Yes. Okay. In addition to that, one of the things that we do is we we do a, some of the old fashioned tradition. We have so many different sources, but yeah. we do the door knocking every time we list a home or we sell a home or it goes on the contract. Right. Actually, it's more when it goes on the contract. Yeah. We go around and we're like, hey, did you hear about Gabriel? And people are like, what's up with Gabriel, right? The neighbor. Or did you hear about Josh? Right. He just sold his house. We had five people over and, right. you know, we tell the story. So, and that's going through a landing page with a QR code. I love my QR codes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Clearly, t shirts, forehead, tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Just thought of it all. We can track. Um, and then people are very interested in knowing what happened to Gabriel. Right. And all we did is, you know, we had multiple offers, show the house, did make open houses, right. and, and brought right. the neighbors in. So, so you were early on, you also made a statement. You said, you know, of course, we do old school stuff like we knock on doors. Like, you know, that's not really old school. Like, no one really does that. And those that do, cremated we but do it consistently that, so yeah. so so what else what else do you do that is outside of the box you or your clients that's unorthodox and that's really the idea exchange i want to have here that is different from what everybody else does to, to like you know using uh, coach meredith to make my listing famous what else do you do so we also do listing commercials um, even us. though I haven't gone viral with any of mine yet, yeah. but yeah. people know that they see them when I go in appointments, like, Oh, I've seen your video and yeah. I may, and I, I am paying for advertising. So I am paying for views. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have those YouTube yeah. videos without yes. any views, yes. but we're basically showing the lifestyle. So it depends on the price point. So yes. typically anything over a million dollars, we, we will bring in actors. We dress people up as yeah. doctors yes. and we do a commercial. So if we know if we're like next to the hospital, we're doing something with doctors. Yes. If we're on the beach, then we have Smart. a bunch of, you know, models, right? Yeah. So I would jump, get, throw the kids on the pool. Cool, right? Yeah, so right. Uh, basically lifestyle videos is one of the things that we do that separates us from the competition. Like in my market, the, my competition has been in the business for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. They dominate, right? But they're yeah. old fashioned. They yeah. don't do videos. They don't do any of the things yeah. that we're doing. Yes. So it takes time. I'm starting to see the results, I would say, after like three and a half years yeah. of being consistent yes. with videos. Yes. I love it. I love it. Jason, what else? What else should we do? So, so if, we were, if we were reimagining a modern just listed or just sold campaign what are some some of the pieces we we should we should be adding in all right so there's been a lot of success in the ecosystem and this isn't my official point but i'm just throwing ideas in the spirit of ideas uh the how we did it strategy has been one that's been pretty popular and it's a simple next step up saying just listed and just sold you're right it's kind of like a weather person saying hey it's raining outside did you know like yes i know they're they're useful when they can predict and forecast and advise. And we should look at ourselves in the same way. Like, how can I give information that maybe the neighbors don't have or be really interested to know? So I think that how we did it is a simple list of bulleted points that talk about some of the highlights in the sale. Here's what went into the process so that to your point, it doesn't seem like, what did this person even do? To, are they just here at their nick of time and they're just getting all the credit? I think that's really important. Uh, a strategy we've been talking about uh, in some of our AI programming. So, so I want to just back yeah, up there. Yeah. So, so if you think about that, so the person listening, like we know in the community, everybody knows. So let's let's talk to our friend that's outside the community. What are some of the pieces that are on a how we did it versus it just sold so people have context so they can start to reimagine that maybe Hector, again, let's throw Robert Mack. Yeah, this um, is a great a really example. Good one. I showed it today at the event. Let's throw that in so people can see So that. There's, the, there's the expected data. Um, how long it was on the market, mm-hmm. uh, terms that we can reveal based upon the time of the process. When yeah. it's, you can't always say the price, yeah. depending upon when you do the mailer yeah. and so forth, or just different rules and regulations. But how many showings did we have? Yeah. How many offers did we have? Mm-hmm. How many buyers are still in the marketplace looking for a home like the one that didn't sell? And do you know anybody else looking to sell? Yes. And so it shows a continued spirit of effort to serve other neighbors in that same respective community that it's not just done. Yes. But on the flip side, correct me if I'm wrong, what I think is so fascinating about that piece is you actually say, here's what we did over four weeks, and you stack it up to show your value. Like everything, so we sat down with the seller, we made a decision to hire someone to reimagine this wall, the staging, to carpet, yeah. to paint, to stage, but but you chunk it in time. So, so just take the nonsense of a just sold card, throw it in the trash, and reimagine maybe a eight by 11 piece that says, how we did it, 
you know, $127,000 above asking, here's the story. And then, hey, we met this person. Tell the truth. We met this person 60 days ago. We met this person five years ago. And they were telling us they wanted to do this, this, and this. And then here's what happened. We did this. And then in week two, we did this. And week three, we did this. And week four, we did this. And in week five, we unveiled the property. And on the right side, here's the results. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about the analytical seller. Think about the, think about the potential for sale by owner seller. Think about... Think about the person that hasn't sold a house in like 35 years and they're like, honey, our home is a mess. Like we're going to invite people over. And then we read this thing that says carefully curated all of our personal belongings, right? Made sure that, and like this, just this beautiful description of how you made the experience easy for me. So what else are you going to say? You said something about AI. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Jason yeah, said surprise. something about AI. <laughs> Uh, we have a strategy that we're just starting to test out in the ecosystem, and we call it robot mail, and it's a few different steps. Um, we know handwritten notes are incredibly effective, uh, and this actually was an idea that builds off of a script that you shared last year. So, Jimmy, if I could paraphrase a script that you wrote, um, you would send an email to your database, and it was typically, this is more of a coming soon or a just listed strategy than a just sold strategy. It was generally the day before the listing would go live so that you fit within all the regulations. And it was to your database contacts. And it effectively said, hey, we're listing a property at this price range in this area. Um, in the event, you can think of anybody who's been out looking for a home and hasn't found what they're looking for yet. Here's my personal cell. Have them text me. Have them call me. If I don't answer, have them leave a voicemail. <clears throat> that was the script. It was beautiful and it was for database contacts. And so we thought, hey, what if we transpose that script as if for a handwritten note to the neighbors around the listing, use yes. the listing to get more listings. Yes. But then we thought, well, okay, two, two problems. Problem one, I'm gonna get writer's cramp in my hand. That's a lot of writing. And no one wants to do that amount of work. We can solve that. Problem two, if you send a copied and pasted effectively script that's a handwritten note to every neighbor and they compare notes, the gig is up because it looks like everybody got the same note. So what we're doing is we're taking the note and we're plugging it into ChatGPT or Tom AI or a tool like that. And we're saying, we want you to create a hundred variations of this exact script. Don't change the name. Don't yes. change the price. We keep the key data the same, but vary the script ever so slightly so that every single recipient gets a different letter. And when you're done, export it as a spreadsheet. And so when you export it as a spreadsheet, you can just take that spreadsheet and you upload it straight into a tool like Handwriter, uh, handwrite.io. There are a lot of tools out there that you use know, handwriting letters, robots. Uh, yes. So yes, there's, there's, yes. there's a lot of them out there. And for anybody watching, they cost money. So yes, be on the yes, lookout. They do yeah, cost money. Yeah. Sending mail always costs money. But what they'll do is you can either use one of their fonts or you can literally like mission impossible style, make your own font and it can then handwrite a note. But what's crazy about these companies is there are companies out there that do handwritten fonts that they print. This is not print. These are handwriting robots that hold a pen. And what's crazy is they vary their writing style from letter to letter to letter. So for example, they can say, on this letter, I want the character spacing to be a little bit off. On this letter, I want you to write a little bit of an angle. Press the ink down harder. Tilt the pen a little bit. And so you get that nuance and variance that you can only see from the human handwriting from a robot. And then you have a couple of options. Either have them ship them to you and you can hand deliver just depending upon clear cooperation and what that window of time is or time it where they all get to the neighbors like the day of or the day before the listing goes live and then every neighbor opens up a unique handwritten note from you yes. talking about their neighbor's property coming to the market. And what I'd invite you to consider is, is that a lot of work? Yeah. Imagine there's a geographic farm that some agent dominates. And you've been thinking for the longest flipping time, I want to take them over. I want to find a way to crack the door open and break into that marketplace. And I've got a listing. There's an old book from Seth Godin. It's called What You're Going to Do With That Duck. And the idea is, you, I love it. I love the title. His whole point is you could spend your life getting your ducks in a row or you could realize you've got a duck. So use it. <laughs> I just love it. God, I love and Seth. I know he's such a, he's a I, I just, I almost think one step further to that because I love yeah. that. I love the hundred variations inside of Tom AI or ChatGPT. I would just say one step further is that would be my, I'm holding a private 
neighborhood only open house. Oh my gosh, yeah. Right. The, the and then you don't P have to worry about drop shipping. Yes. I'm holding a private come by, have a glass of champagne, have some wine and cheese, see all your neighbors, you know, whatever whatever you do, you know, have a ham sandwich. I don't know, whatever, know your client. Um, but the point is taking that one step further because now I've got a mega open house with all the all the neighbors and everybody's like, if they walked in with their letters and they all saw variations, they'd be like, this girl wrote how many letters? Like, like that would be bananas. Okay. Well, I got what 12, we I got like 12 ideas just from listening. <laughs> to uh, I had a feeling come that on. was coming. So, this is, what is the title of the show? Yes. Yes. Ideas. 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 I got an idea. Well, I got a new idea that I'll pitch you guys on here in a second. But I think one, one thing before I share a couple of thoughts here is there's a little bit of a mindset change that agents have to have in this market, yeah. which is the listing, the money you spend to market a listing oftentimes it's not thought of as a, as a cost. It's, uh, you try to minimize it. You're like, hey, this thing's gonna sell quickly. I'm, I, don't really, I really shouldn't promote that much. You know, that, that, that is the, I mean, that is the, literally the worst way to approach it. If you think about the investment you're putting in your marketing is future customers. Now all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I'm, that, that makes a ton of sense to spend $2,000 marketing this listing because it's gonna help me get you know, three more customers. Yes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the way to, to break out of the stranglehold that is just listed and just sold. The, the, the better sameness that we see. You mentioned earlier, Loris, about the idea that agents are just getting bigger and bigger cards, right? And, and postcards. The way to get out of that world is to do things so fundamentally different yeah. that no one in the market is doing. I'll give you an example of this. The first time you should market a listing isn't before you have the listing, like actually have the listing appointment. You can you not write with paper too? Need paper as well? well yeah, it's gonna be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, right on the table. It. Yeah, the, the, the first time you should market a listing is when you've booked the appointment. And, you, and this is where a lot of people screw it up, is like once the home is coming soon, right, now the, the timelines start getting really accelerated. So when I book an appointment, and let's say it's three days out, five days out, I'm getting a letter in the mailbox of the closest 100 people saying, hey, I'm gonna be in your area because one of your sellers is, or one of your neighbors is thinking about selling. And if you want me to swing by afterwards to kind of give you a free home value equity update, I'm happy to stop by, here's my cell number, right? Now people are gonna say, oh, Jimmy, you know, I can't print it and have every door direct deliver that in time because my appointments are in 72 hours. Great, get someone on your team to go to the FedEx, print it out and start dropping it in no their mailbox. I mean, like get to work on happen. this stuff. Exactly. My goodness, I, I, I'm waiting for Uber to offer that service. They'll now take your Amazon packages back to UPS for you. I mean, yes. come on. I know. And so I like that idea. I'm pretty sure you can already do that. So yeah. the first thing is, is that, and, and, the, and the beauty of this for clear cooperation is that you're not marketing a listing. You're marketing an appointment. And you can market appointments all day long. You can market them seven days, 14 yep. days, 20. Yep. You're marketing an appointment. So that's the first thing, right? The second thing on the, on the, um, the way I would think about this team is I would think about it as one continuous conversation with that my neighbors. So if I'm doing that, let's say appointment campaign, the next campaign I might send like, hey, I wanted to give you an update, assuming they already got the other letter and now they re I want to give you an update. My client has decided to list the property. We're putting on the market and whatever the date is, and I'm gonna invite you using Tom's idea to a private neighbor only open house. Then when the home hits the market, Right, you in the mar the home hits the market. You did a Facebook ad, you did a YouTube ad, you did a couple direct mail camp, you did an Instagram reel. Hey, m the home went viral. I wanted to keep you posted as promised. The home reached 35,000 people on social media. We're getting a ton of offers right now. We're reviewing them. We'll make it just you know, like you can you start to use dude. I'll go. Can I dive in on that? Yeah, so like, what doesn't last point here is like one continuous story. Hopefully. And by the time they read the fifth or sixth letter, like they know who you are. And, and to Tom's earlier point, the worst thing we can do in this industry is tell everyone it's easy and fast and simple. I know. Show the sweat every step along the way. So Sean Ryan, one of our great coaches, and he's in Sarnia Lambton, Ontario. He has a piece and he does it on social and it's a mailer that goes out. And it's a how we did it style campaign. But he lists out, he says like 56,388 social media hits, something like that. And then he itemizes a list of how many views came from every respective platform, ranging from Facebook to TikTok to LinkedIn to Google to name it. But he goes all the way down to the MLS 
and he highlights the wines at the bottom that everybody does. Yes. And then he's got a little Here's note the at the bottom he's, and, where it says something yep. to the effect of, yeah. the average realtor uses these channels. Yes. You can see we do 10 times the reach and exposure of your listing compared to the average realtor or something like that. Yeah, I actually do the same. I also, one of the things I do is I show them where they're coming from by state. I have a map and it tells right. me in New York or California. So I said, they, so they love that. I'm going to, since, that. you know, I sold your neighbor's house and this is basically where, you know, the business came from. We're actually going to advertise in those markets yeah. only and we're going to double down on, you know, Facebook oh, ads, wow. Instagram ads. And oh, yeah. that, you can't just glaze over that point. That's a really big yeah. point. Yeah, it's very That's specific. Super smart. For, even by city, I have it in percentage. So I know where to spend my money. Yeah. You also think, again, for the person listening, hard to argue against he or she who has the greatest degrees of separation, call it differentiation between their competition. That is the difference, right? The easiest way to take out, I hope they're just not one of my clients, a legendary 20, 30, 40 year agent in the business is to create a clear marker. This is how everybody else does it. This is what I'm doing. And every time you can do that, you begin to stand out, but you can't do it once. You got to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over until people start demanding the degree of separation. Okay, so I have two new headlines for the end of Just Salts. Here, here's, here's the first one, you ready? Zillow was wrong again, right? Zillow was wrong again, and that, like, that's the headline. So all it says, Zillow was wrong again, and then you turn it over, or better yet, click the QR code, hit the QR code to find out how wrong Zillow was. And then I put down below that and what it means to your equity. Curiosity, imagination, they click on it. And I'm gonna tell the story and I'm gonna show the new history of Zillow's estimate. Thank you guys for putting that on there. That's fantastic for us marketers. The Zillow's estimate of Zillow said it was worth this and then this and then this. And by the way, when we listed the home, it was listed on Zillow as a estimate of this we listed it here. We did this and 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 this. And when we released the property, we sold for $145,000, dollars more. Whatever the number is, Zillow was wrong again. Would you like to know how much your home is really worth? Right? And a little like, you know, CTA to come back to me again. So that's one, just playing around with it. I have this other thought around your neighbor's home is at the other end of the rainbow. Just to have people go, what? Just like, just picture like a house mm -hmm. and a rainbow. I need a better variation on the headline. But what I want is when they turn it over, I want them to hit the QR code and literally like a pot of gold is sitting there. Mm -hmm. A visual pot of gold. Like your neighbor just picked up a pot of gold because we listed their home, thir you know, whatever the time. And you tell March the is story. the perfect time for this. March is the perfect time. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. March is Heck, perfect. get this show out fast. Yeah. So I'm like, what else, what else can we do to eliminate the stupid just sold cards? Well, one thing, one thing that jumps out to me is so you can, you can make the small big and you make the big small. And so when you take a, a stat, like uh, that's a marketable stat, such as how long the home was on the market for, let's say it was three days. Oftentimes that's included in like three or four different kind of talking points on a campaign. But I think the, the thing that we don't answer with that is who cares? Why, why does it actually matter? Why does it matter if the home was in the market for three days versus 30 days or 60 days? They've owned the house for 15 years. Why does it actually matter that the home sat a little bit longer? Our buddy Jeremy over at Palm Agent has this great app and his tool, which is called like holding cost. And you can look at how much it costs you to hold a property when the home is currently on the market. So as an example, if I'm an agent right now who, who sells houses, let's say, two times faster. Let's say my average days on market is seven and the average agent in my MLS is 14. Well, I'm 100% faster than the average agent. So I would say I would create a campaign around like a just sold where we just sold this house in seven days. The reason this matters is if a home sits on the market for 30 days, it costs you $6,000. If it sits on the market for 60 days, it costs you 12,000. If it goes eight, you know, 100 or 90 days, a hundred, you know, whatever the number is, $18,000. And you make that number real to them. So yes, selling houses is, is sounds great, but how do you communicate that in a way that people really understand what the cost is for holding the home? Yes. Yeah. I, I love that. What are you thinking? You just gave me a great idea. Video I'm going to do now. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. You can do like a green screen in the background. What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah. And show it to them and show them the numbers. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. That's like Shannon's shout out Shannon, to Shannon Shannon. like that video. Yeah. Okay. I have another one like playing to the ego of the high end, right? Mm -hmm. Said with love and respect, right? Is, is your home in like a box, right? With 
all of the marketing around the box. Mm -hmm. All the marketing is outside of the box, mm -hmm. right? Is your home worthy of out of the box marketing? Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I'm spitballing. I'm making this stuff up on the fly. We'll tighten that up. Yeah. But like, think about it. Like the other, cause the other note I have is like, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a just listed card that something like, or it'd be a just sold, but it'd be why settle for average? And what mm -hmm. if the card was round? Yeah. And not square. <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah. like why settle, why well, settle for average? You gave, you, gave, just... yeah. you gave me an idea. Uh, this is something they do in direct response marketing uh, for brands that sell directly to consumers. What they'll do is they'll take uh, a product and they'll have like a press release where it's like on Vogue or on, right. your, and they'll sh the, the yes. article will be about that. What would be really interesting would be to take like the New York Times and say, put their house on the front page of the New York Times. Now this might be a copyright violation, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> yeah. But like put their house, put their house in mainstream press, take a photo of that yes. and say, would you like your home featured like here? Yes. One other idea is I love someone did this. I'm not sure if they still do the hot home. I got an idea. I got an idea. The the uh the does Redfin still do the hot home thing? They do. So why aren't we saying we will make your home a hot home on Redfin? Scan this QR code to find out how. Well, if you're Zillow Showcase or any of those other types of, I mean, it's once 100%. again, you should be marketing those types yes. of services. Yes. I mean, again, any layer of separation and differentiation, if you look at the data from 1000 Watt, so 1000 Watt, our good right. buddies over there, yeah. did a study of sellers and they surveyed sellers and asked, what do you care about most when it comes to the listing agent you hire? What do they bring into the table that makes them worthy of hire? And they said by a wide margin, a huge degree of separation, the most valuable tactic deployed by a listing agent is social media marketing of a listing. Mm -hmm. Social media marketing of a listing, wide margin more, they said, than Zillow and the MLS. Yeah. Now, some agents will hear that and say like, well, they're wrong. And you're not hearing the point. Yeah. What, what's really being said is the seller's looking for a degree of separation. Yes. They're looking to align interest with an agent who can bring something to the table that not everybody else can. Why? Because they deserve better. Because hear, their home is in the box and deserves more. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Brad McCallum on yeah. YouTube. And this isn't yeah. a just listed campaign, but it's a similar, it's a similar psychology in effect with the seller. So I always say when I teach video marketing, you get what your content attracts. If you consistently make content for buyers, you're gonna get buyers. Yep. If you consistently make content that's geared towards sellers, you're going to attract sellers because the algorithm's job is to serve your content to interested parties over time if you're consistent. Brad makes 11 minute ridiculous HGTV quality, beautiful home tours. Yeah. Now, if you know Brad's story, which yes. he shared before, and I'll On give you the show. abbreviated On version. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so Brad, I was making sure he's done it publicly. I've heard it in a private mastermind. Um, he requested the permission to make a really lovely video of somebody else's luxury listing. And he was given the proper con percent, uh, consent to do that. He made a great video, got permission again, did it again, did it again. And before you know it, all of a sudden, these sellers of luxury property start saying, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. my home deserves a spotlight. Mm -hmm. And Brad has now created a marketable asset his YouTube channel that is a spotlight that nobody else can contend with. And like a hundred million dollar business in the process. So yeah, like exactly. Very quickly, so very quickly. Whether it's organic, whether it's video, whether it's uh, direct response, whatever it is, what are you gonna do to create a layer of separation? Even if you pay for Zillow Showcase or the Hot Homes, whatever it is, how are you gonna tell the seller, we're prepared to do more? And, and then take a snapshot of that yep. and put it on a postcard and mail it out. What's your ideas? Talk to us. So I had a list and I couldn't sell. Um, so I said, do I have permission to do marketing? And the seller said, yes. I said, okay, great. So I put a sign outside that says this ugly house is for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I was the third listing. It was an expired listing. Okay, yeah. Third, beautiful, the third beautiful. agent to list the home. And yes. I got it sold with multiple offers and everybody would just call me by that. They're like, why are you doing that? I'm like, I'm, you're this, calling me, aren't yeah, thank you? Thank you for calling. It's thank you for calling. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I think that's good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, maybe doing that with someone like I have some really high end listings are right. very slow to move. Yes. Um, um, I'm doing QR oh, codes. Headline. I'm doing yeah. QR codes for surprise, that. Surprise, surprise, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm going to do some more of those signs. Yes, <laughs> yes. The thought that goes my mind on, and we'll share your idea. I'm walking away. I just have a headline. I have a headline on hers. The headline is like, imagine you serve a neighborhood. And I don't know if this is going to, this may be bad. This may be wrong. I have no idea. Imagine you serve like an upper end community called like Highland Park Estates, something like that. Your headline could say, how is this house in Highland Park Estates? I like that. As a headline. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then they scan the code. 
That'll get scans. Yeah. Yeah. So my wife is sitting over there, and she remembers the two houses down the street on Sabrina Terrace in Corona Del Mar that all my friends would like drive by, like all my fix and flip guys, and be like, dude. You got like two fix and flips on your street. Like I'm like, yeah, you should buy those. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and please fix them. Please fix and flip because one lady <laughs> owned like six houses and she just let these things just go to nothing. Mm -hmm. And literally like no tenants, like nothing. And yep. you go like mega mansion, mega mansion, mega mansion, absolute beater tear down, absolute beater tear down, and then everything else. Uh, so I think you can do it either. I, I mean, love, and you could do it that. either way. Either it is a fix and flip, or maybe it's actually yeah. like a beautiful property, and or it has like scenic views, or it right. could be a positive or a negative. Right. Either yeah. way you look right. at it. Right. The, the 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 thought that goes to my mind right now, or the idea I've got, it. And this is the this is the truth in real estate is that market share compounds, which is if yes. you become the number one agent, all of a sudden you start getting listings just because you're the number course, one agent. Of course. And and so you you talk about the year in review, mm -hmm. right? Just give yeah. everyone just a quick thirty seconds on that. Okay, so very quickly, um, for, I don't know, 16 years, I'm looking at Mary Judd over there, president of coaching. She came up with this concept of you need to publish your transaction count from last year. And however you want to do it, you want to put it on a map with a bunch of dots, that's great. You want to do a bunch of big photos of all the beautiful houses and something to the effect of, we want to thank the 2,275 people that allowed us to help them with their real estate needs in a very challenging year, which would be a nice thing to say considering it's 2023. But one step beyond that, is we talk about the challenges that, that most entrepreneurs face, but in real estate specifically, there's a perception. Mm -hmm. There's a perception, like they go, oh, million dollar listing, and every time they're talking about a house, what do they show on TV? $100,000 commission, right? And what happens is the consumers start to go, all they do is drink, yell at each other, sleep with people inside their office, and they make $100,000 every time they sell a house. So this, this perception war that we're in, what, what I think is, this, this is like my, my two cents, so you take it and you decide. What if you actually showed people what you did last year? What if you said, here's my year in review, like Spotify, like here's the top five podcasts you listen to, right? And this one is like, here's the five things that we did above and beyond for our clients. I knocked on 375 doors because three of my clients desperately wanted to live in a community. There was no homes in the market. I sent out 4,947 personal note cards to five communities when I found I did 200 open houses last year. I did 57 equity reviews for my clients. What yeah. you're doing is you're, you're showing your friends, your sphere, your clients, you're showing them that you're a gritty business person and that you go above and beyond. So like that was the concept because everybody's kind of done the look at me, I'm successful. Yeah. I, think the, I think the more important piece is, and there's, listen, I don't care where you are in the world, there's a percentage of the population that goes, she's got work ethic. I like that. I'm calling her. People like me? to work with people who work hard. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think that, the, so the reason I had you share that is because that's a year in review, kind of talking about your overall business. There's a, there's a play on that that came to my mind, which is what about the month in review of your previous sales? Every sale has a marketable moment. So as an example, if I'm thinking about your business, right, we have a, um, like, let's say one of your listings got, I don't know, let's say 15,000 video views. One of your listings you sold after three agents failed to sell it because you did this amazing campaign, buy this ugly house, right? One of your other campaigns may, may became a hot home on Redfin. And you take, have your five or seven or 10 sales and you just find one little, like not every home is gonna hit on every cylinder every time. Right. One right. marketable moment. And then so like, this is what we did this month. And right. so, you know, we're all familiar with the- I love right? that. Like, I, I got mean, an idea. But like, we're all familiar with like, the, here's all my sales, but there's no content. Text, there's no there's, sweat, right? It doesn't show me how you did it. And and I think that because every listing has a marketable moment. Sometimes you gotta dig a little bit deeper, yeah. right, to find it. But like every listing has that moment. What are you thinking? What I, are you thinking? I, I do that for recruiting. Uh, I share the story how I got a listing. So I have a twenty million dollar listing on the market now, and it took us about a year and a half to get it. We cold call from another thirty two million dollar house that we sold. Yeah and nurture the customer over and over and over through Mojo Dialer and everything else. Finally get an appointment, go on the appointment. So when I share that, I mean, I have people hitting me up. I want to join your team. I want to do what you guys yeah. are doing. Right. So for Is recruiting- you we were talking about in Miami last year? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So from recruiting perspective, like every time we have, I have, you know, we have 88 million, we have a 20 million, we have yeah. a 25 million, we yeah. have some really high end ones, but I'm not the queen in town yet. So I'm just trying like to become, I'm, yes. I like the word, yeah. I'm Coming trying soon. to, I'm trying to become that, but I share the story of the struggle, the real story. I mean, yes. I'm not hanging out in the country club. I'm just an average person yeah. trying to get to that point. Right. And people are just so attracted to that. Other yes. agents are attracted to that. Yes. They see the sweat equity and the yes. effort that it took to get this listing. Lotus, mm. I love that.
So you got an, you got an idea. They're building off of each of what you both said. Yes. So one, I love the year end review, and I'm going to circle back to that in a second. Your idea of the monthly um, marketable moments of the listing, it made me remember when the pandemic first hit. And it was just multiple offer mayhem and buyer's agents could not get an offer under contract. And it was incredibly difficult. We came up with an internal strategy. We worked on with our clients. We called it buyer agent report cards. And it was when you'd submit your offer and you were like offer number 22, you would submit your buyer agent report card with your offer and it would show the number of deals you actually finish. And it would show the percentage of your deals yeah. that close. Yeah. And you would want to sow seeds of doubt that the other buyer's agents may not have their buyers as well organized to complete the transaction. And you want to just, yeah. As you're reviewing everyone else's offers yes. and you're reviewing their offer to close percentage, I thought I would just point out mine. Yeah. And now immediately. And you're the just, seeds you just go up doubt. the stack a little bit. That's I just, it. you want to, and I think there's a similar play with a listing agent report card, whereby you show transparency and accountability to the work you're doing. I think, I think this idea of the year end review is amazing. I'm thinking of one of our rock star coaching clients, Dave Archuleta. Dave Archuleta, a couple of things. One, he just, he's grown a team of over 10 agents in his first three years in the business top producing agent in his entire area. The dude is just hustle all the time. He's incredible, just an incredible guy. Um, I remember he does open houses. I think he does four to six open houses every weekend, four to six every weekend. And he puts out his own yard signs the, or the directional signs, Smart. excuse me, all yes. over the place. And I remember- why, did, why does he do that? I, well, I was talking, I was like, why do you not just get someone to do that for you? And he said, no, 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 I would never stop doing it. I was like, well, well, tell me why. And he said, because when I put my directional signs out, I wave at all the neighbors, <laughs> like I'm the mayor of the town and I smile. And he said, and it always comes back. I'm yes. at a listing appointment and they say, you know, Dave, we're gonna pick you because the truth is we see you out there every Saturday, busting your tail, sweating in the hot sun, putting up signs that nobody else is willing to work that hard. And so we wanna work with you. And you know what? that level of work ethic gets rewarded. Yes. The consumer sees it as yes. long as you let it be seen. Yes. So I've got an idea. All right. We should probably wrap this show up. This person's brain might be popping right now. Hey, I should have said this earlier to you. Will you leave a comment below, whether you're on, you know, wherever you're listening to your podcast or on YouTube or Instagram, but like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do differently? Like you can still do just listed, just sold cards though. I would personally not recommend it, but you should reimagine it. And the one we didn't share is, did you hear about your neighbor? Try that one out. Instead of a just sold card, how about just a big headline says, did you hear about your neighbor? And then you flip it over. There's just a QR code with, you know, if your home is currently listed for sale, this is not a solicitation, right? Like you got to have that like, like writing, but not branded to you, not your face on it, nothing, just their information and a QR code. Did you hear about your neighbor? Try that. Watch what happens. Driving back to a landing page where you tell the story of what happened to their neighbor. Because if you just drive them back to a landing page that says, give me your information. And I'll tell you how much your home is worth. You're going to get squadoosh. And it wasn't my fault. It's because you didn't build a landing page that played off. Did you hear about your neighbor? I met him nine months ago. First we did this, then we did that, then we did this, then we did that, then we did this. And Zillow said this, and we were able to create that. And la, 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 ha, and you're going to kill it. Okay, closing thoughts before we wrap this show. Closing Ladies thoughts, first. just do it. What are you thinking about? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yet. <laughs> just, yeah. yet. yet was my favorite part. I got an $85 million list. I got a $35 million. I'm not, I'm not the dumb one. Yet. <laughs> Coming soon. What do you got? I've got an idea. No, I'm just kidding. I can't have an idea for closing thoughts. Uh, I, I think what really speaks to me in this conversation is it has less to do with the marketing channels. It's not about whether it's a postcard or a door knock or a voicemail or a call or a text or an email or a social post or a video. It's a yes to all the above. What it really boils down to is what you said from the very beginning. Why did the video go viral? Because of the message. It's always about the content. It's always about the message. It's always about leading and when you lead, your clients will follow. And I think if you're consistent about that, you're going to generate more business. I love that. Uh, one, of our, one of our favorite people on the planet, Dr. Julie Gardner, has this great line in her newsletter. She said, uh, the way it's always been done is the slow lane. You know, in every market across the U.S. and Canada, I mean, like, it's so hyper competitive. The ability to be creative and like... My advice to everyone who's watching right now is be the case study. Don't wait for the case study. Get out there, do innovative right. marketing. That's right. how you stand out. That's how you get business. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Follow this one on social. Hello, yet. Just, just put yet in the comments if you know what I'm talking. Just yet. That's all I want to see in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Follow everybody here. Get in action. We'll see you soon. 
Hey, if you like this content, make sure you get back to my channel and check out Jason Pantana, This Week in Marketing, the Tom Ferry Podcast Experience, and of course, Mindset Monday.